Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside Europe's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter and I will serve today as your host. Um, we got a great topic today. We're going to be talking about a senior independent director and the views on their responsibilities and relationships. Joining me is somebody that certainly has lived that world. Welcome my guest, Orna uh, Nikiana. Is that correct? That's correct. Well done. Okay. And she is the um, Senior Independent Director for Royal Mail Group and Saga, the company, and also is the Non-Executive um, Director on Burberry Group. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Well, welcome, Orna, to Thank the show. Thank you. So maybe the good place for us to start is to... Uh, have you talk about the three boards you sit on and what they sort of do to give our audience a good perspective? Of course. Well, the one I've been on for longest is Royal Mail Group. It is, as uh, the name might suggest, the mail company for the UK. So we have the universal service obligation. We deliver letters and parcels up and down the land uh, every day to every household. Turnover is just over £10 billion. We have a big international business alongside the UK business, and the business has been around. Royal Mail has been around for over 500 years now. I've been on that board for nine years. Saga is an insurance company and a holidays company focused on the older customer, the over 50s, and it has a very strong brand name in that sector. And uh, so that's very consumer facing with a strong financial services piece to it as well. Mm -hmm. And then Burberry is probably the one that's best known to your watchers. It's uh, high fashion, luxury fashion, uh, with the famous Burberry check, the famous Burberry trench coat as well. Well, thank you for that. So we want to talk about the senior independent director position. Now, I'm a huge proponent, and the people that watch my show in the States know that every once in a while I get on a soapbox about board leadership. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I know that in different countries in Europe there are different structures and um, um, ownership uh, levels. Um, and in the UK you have a chairman and a, a SID, a senior independent director. Um, can you in, in the terms of leadership, can you explain a little bit about the duties for the chairman and the duties for the, for the CID? Absolutely. I think the chairman is the one I'll keep short. The chairman leads the board. That's a very clearly defined role which has been in place for many, many years. The senior independent director has gained in prominence over the years as the uh, person who ensures that the chairman is answerable in some way. Without a senior independent director being in place, the chairman might arguably be answerable to nobody except the outside world, the shareholders. Senior independent director is there uh, to help ensure that the chairman is answerable to someone. So the senior independent director would evaluate the chair every year. Uh, with the non-executive directors and the executive directors and give any feedback if required. So is the senior independent director uh, elected by the other directors or is that a position that is filled much like the chairman's position? It's filled much like the chairman's position and of course the chairman is likely to have a say in appointing the senior independent director. Uh, nevertheless, the senior independent director uh, does need to be independent of that appointment. Yeah. One thing that's important is that the senior independent director should have no aspiration to be the chair, not at least of that particular company, yeah. because that would set up a conflict. But if I'm correct, the senior independent director also has the responsibility of finding or heading the committee that finds the chairman. Exactly, exactly. And that's what provides the balance. In the extreme case as well, the senior independent director would be the one who tells the chair that the board has perhaps decided that it's time to move on. So there is a very effective check and balance and that's the role of That's the, the intention, yeah. yes. So if you were going to share 
what are the biggest challenges of serving as the senior independent director? What would you tell our audience are the sort of the biggest challenges? Well, in, in a healthy company with perhaps a great new chair, experienced chair, and a wonderful chief executive in a market that's stable, the senior independent director probably has no challenges. Everything's going swimmingly well, the board's being run well, uh, the company's thriving. The senior independent challenges, director challenges arise when all of those are not in place. If, if a company's in pressure because of market context or competitive comp context, or if the chair has perhaps less experience in some areas, the senior independent director is the person who will try and help ensure that the chair can be the best they can be in that situation. So you might have a situation where the chair is fantastic at running the board, fantastic relationship with the chief exec, but isn't visible enough to the shareholders, isn't out there visible enough in the company. That would be a very easy thing for the senior independent director to encourage the chair to, to address those issues. In a, in a challenged company, it might be more, uh, more urgent in that if the chair is perhaps not moving fast enough to address risks that need to be addressed, the senior independent director might be the one who gathers the feedback from the rest of the executive and non-executive directors and helps the chair perhaps move a little faster. So in those situations, there can be challenge. And of course, when you're choosing the new chair, where you want to make sure you choose the best chair for the circumstances today, not a cardboard cutout of the previous chair unless the circumstances yeah. haven't changed. Knowing that the UK has term limits, do you serve all your nine years in the position of the senior independent director, or is that something, is that a responsibility that rotates within your yeah. time on a board? It, it would typically rotate. I think the more likely situation, though I haven't looked at the figures, is that someone has been on a board for three or four years and becomes the senior independent director and then would probably stay in that role for their remaining five or six years. Makes sense. Well, um, Orna, I want to thank you for taking the time on joining me and sort of setting the record straight on the roles of the of the Senior Independent Director, and I appreciate you taking the time. Great pleasure to be here. Thank you, TK. Yeah. And that will conclude this episode of uh, Inside Europe's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again um, soon with a next critical issue that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then.